Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah Stutzman, and this is our farm, Wolf Oak Revival. We believe that there's a revival of those of you out there that are wanting to learn more about how to care for your body, how to eat better foods, how to source better foods, how to grow your own foods, and so that's what we do here. We teach you tips and skills whether you're a homesteader or you're not, or you're dreaming of becoming one, these are things that you can do in your backyard. You can grow so much on just a quarter acre, or even on um, you know, your windowsill in your apartment. You can grow herbs, you can raise quail in your apartment. There's, when you think outside the box, you can do so much. So today is all about taking this garlic, cleaning it up, making some faux braids, and hanging it in our house so that we can use it throughout winter. Garlic is a staple in so much of what we cook. This will last us up until about February, then it starts to dehydrate on its own and kind of just shrivel up and get yucky. So we make the most of it. There are ways to extend the season of garlic. Um, if you take a bunch now, you can chop it up um, fresh, throw it in some apple cider vinegar, you can mince it, put in some apple cider vinegar, keep it in your refrigerator all under that um, vinegar, and um, you know you can use it medicinally that way. Um, or even just throw it in some stir fries, use it to cook. Um, think about when you get minced garlic in the store. So you're, you're pretty much doing the same thing. Um, honestly, I just don't have time to do that, and I know it's probably an excuse, but um, it is on one of my, you know, things to do. You know, maybe if I have a day free this fall and it's cold out, and, I want to sit by the fire. Maybe I'll do that. But for right now, this is how we are um, cleaning up this garlic. So we take our garlic out of the ground in July. Usually around July 4th, you can tell when it's ready um, because the bottom parts of the leaves are going to start to die off and get um, like yellow. And then, um, so that's usually around July 4th here in Zone B, um, 6B, and uh, we're in Pennsylvania. So. Um, Prior to that, in June, we cut off the scapes, which are the seed heads of the garlic, and um, that allows all the energy to go down into the bulb of the garlic, okay, and to allow it to get bigger. Um, so then in July, we harvest it all, and we tie it up in bundles. We leave um, the biggest bulbs, those are gonna be our seed bulbs. So we're gonna um, let this hang, let this dry. I put it in the barn where it's know it, it gets good um, oxygen flow good air flow but it's dry in there not too humid not too you know moist in there let it dry and so now it's September and I'm gonna clean this up and put this up in the house there was one year we let it in the barn and it froze and I was so devastated so don't do that so let me show you how we do this So you want to make sure that you clip that beard off, all those roots. And then I leave a really long stem. I used to not do that, but this year I think I'm going to do the faux braid, which I'll try to show you guys. Um, it's just using twine and tying it together that way. That way I can hang it. Prior to that, I would just cut it down here at the base and throw it in like a basket that had some good egg flow. Um, egg flow. I'm thinking of my egg basket. I put it in one of those antique egg baskets that had some good airflow. So any basket that has good airflow, you can put it in. Um, but I've actually learned that if you leave this stem on it, this stalk, um, it actually allows it to last longer in storage. So we're going to try that. So then all you do is peel all the outer layer off, the, the layer that has any dirt on it to get it looking real nice. Now this one's not too nice looking. So I'm gonna put that on the side of my um, box here that I have as one to use first. The nicer ones that look like this, this one's all cleaned up as you can see. That one, that's gonna just get braided in and then that one we can use later. But any that, you know, are looking a little funky, you're gonna use those right away. Girl, 
garlic is one of those things that I love growing. It's so easy. So we will pull our sweet potatoes out probably the beginning of October. We'll look at the long range forecast. If it's gonna be warm, we'll pull our sweet potatoes out in, August, um, in October. And then we're gonna let them cure. And in that spot where we dug the sweet potatoes out is normally where we will plant the garlic because it's so soft, the soil is so soft and so rich um, and aerated and we'll plant the garlic in there. So all you do is take all those cloves apart, you leave the skin on them and you just put them in the ground, cover them up and tuck them into bed and they will start shooting up a little bit. You'll start to see some green little stems come up um, and then It'll frost, it'll get cold, it'll snow, and they'll all be tucked underneath that ground. And sometimes we'll actually mulch it too. We'll put some wood chips on or some dried manure on there and just tuck them away. And then they start growing in spring and they will grow and grow and grow, like I said, until June, where you will take the scapes off. And those scapes we use, I freeze them, I use them in soups and stews and bone broth, and I make um, a garlic scape pesto with them. So don't throw those away. Those are um, a valuable thing that you can use um, for you know, more food, more food dishes for culinary purposes. Um, but then in July you harvest. So it's the easiest crop to grow and it's one that adds so much flavor to our meals here on the homestead. I wanna know, do you guys, in the comments, do you guys grow garlic? Um, there are so many different varieties. We, oh my word, we don't even know what variety this is. We've just continued to plant and replant um, our bulbs from each year. We save some seed and we, we just plant it every year. We just you know do that. But there is a local woman here in um, in our area that specializes in all kinds of garlic, and um, she knows all the varieties. And she actually taught a folk school for me here, and it's just incredible because um, of the varieties. And there's so many that are better storage varieties. Um, I will tell you this, we grow a hard neck. So a hard neck is um, this stem here, this stalk is hard, it's firm, and that is a better storage garlic, whereas soft neck is not. And so if you are looking to store garlic, make sure you get a hard neck variety. And don't go to the store and just buy garlic to plant it because the majority of garlic that you see in the grocery store is from China. And then coming, anything that comes in overseas goes through a radiation process. So it most likely won't grow. And if it does, you know, you wanna start with a really good seed. So there are so many farmers now, you know, source them out, ask, just ask. And that's, that's how you find gold mines sometimes. So ask around, there are farmers that are starting to grow garlic, like my friend um, Sharon here in Pennsylvania who grows it. And that is, that's what she does. She's a garlic farmer and she will sell it. She will um, sell it for growing. She will sell it for you know, eating purposes. She ships it. I'll put her information down here, um, down below, so you can get in touch with her and see if she will ship it to your region. Because I know now in October, people are seeking it out to grow it. So um, seek out farmers in your area that um, know a lot more about garlic. I know we just love to grow it and um, use it in our own home cooking. box ready to go I'm gonna give it a try I have never done garlic braids before like I said I would just snip it save the bulbs in baskets and keep it in the pantry but for me this farm of ours is a palette it's or I should say a canvas and everything we, we grow and we harvest we create beautiful things, beautiful culinary dishes that just are, are just use all of our five senses. And so such slow food needs to be on display. Would you agree? So I want to display this in my kitchen. And you know what? If all else fails, hey, I tried and I'll try again. But 
all else fails, then we'll just put it in a basket and put it in the pantry like we normally do because at the end of the day, it's all gonna taste the same and it's gonna make our dishes flavorful and delicious throughout the winter and early spring. Like I said, this, all of this right here, everything we have here, that is gonna supply us up until about February. Um, I can't get it to last longer than that. If you have any tips, please let me know. Um, comment and, and share with us in the captions, in, in the comments. But um, it just starts to dry out and not rot, but get really like just dehydrate itself pretty much. And like I said, I know you can take it and you can put it in apple cider vinegar, you can crush it and soak it in apple cider vinegar. Um, I just haven't done that. I like it fresh. I love, I absolutely love roasted garlic and that's just chopping off the top, drizzling with some olive oil and putting it in the toaster oven with some salt and pepper on top and letting it slow roast and squeezing it out into some olive oil and just dip sourdough bread in. It's like my all time favorite. Um, but let's get to trying these garlic braids. I'm not promising anything, but we're gonna do that. I'm in the folk school room and I know I, I talked about that before in the beginning of this video. I think I did. Um, folk school, if you're not familiar, if you're new around here, folk school is something that we do on our farm that brings community together to teach these homesteading ancestral skills. And um, it's just one of my favorite spaces. Brooke and I started renovating it about five years ago, uh, renovating our garage in our 1876 farmhouse. This was obviously, the garage was obviously an addition, I don't know when, but an addition put onto this farmhouse. And we love finding all the nooks and crannies in this farmhouse. I mean, gosh, there are nooks and crannies. And, and the additions and the add-ons that were done. Um, so when we started renovating this, we found the original um, siding, which is like a shiplap. We found this beautiful stone wall that must have been the old chimney. I think there must have been some kind of old fireplace here. We can't quite find that, I don't know. We're just making speculations, but it matches the stone wall that's on the barn. And so we're like, wow, what a, you know, a beautiful reminder that this is our starting point and the barn renovation is going to be our final, um, you know, renovation of this of this farm because ultimately we want to create a larger space a larger community space and we're already seeing the need for it so many more people want to come to folk school and I can only house like eight people around this table sometimes only six if it's like really intense hands-on classes like sourdough or um, or uh, fermenting classes so I would love to be able to expand even more, but I'm thankful for this space and this opportunity to use my education degree and my love for homesteading and farming and um, nutrition and all those things to be able to continue to teach and do it from my home and to be here with my, my children. So um, that's a little bit about folk school. So if you're local or if you are on the East Coast and you are up for traveling, we often have people travel in. Um, and I can hook you up with places to stay around the area. We are in a cute little touristy um, town in Pennsylvania that I don't even go into the town because it's like one of those like towns that the locals don't go into because it's so touristy. It's kind of like one of those beach towns where the locals only come out um, certain times of the year. And that would be me. So um, I would love for you to explore our little town and enjoy it because it is quite a gem. But like I said, I love everything we have on our farm and our homestead that I don't feel the need to have to go out, but I want you guys to enjoy it. Hopefully you can get to our part of the country and enjoy our little cool small town. All right, enough talking. Let's get to, to braiding. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not totally giving up, but I definitely need more practice at braiding garlic. This one's a little sad. It's kind of falling apart. The stalks are going every which way. I need a little help on that. What I think I'm gonna do, the easiest method, are the bundles. Just a few at a time. Get them real tight. Bundle them with um, some twine. 
And I think I'm gonna do a few of these just for the kitchen for pretty. And then the rest of them, because remember, time is also of the essence. As much as I love the artistic flair of braided garlic and bundles hanging in my kitchen, I also have to remind myself that there's a lot that needs to be done on the homestead yet. So in a pretty basket in the pantry, that's where it's gonna go. I have hooks in my pantry that I will hang this basket on so it gets good airflow and we will utilize this all winter long. And like I said, at the end of the day, it all tastes the same, it makes us happy campers. I just have to release that inner creativity um, and just maybe keep practicing. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you back, well I can't promise, hopefully next week. <laughs> Bye guys.